outside of Felicity, who's now back in third. Intensify and Rupert's Promise. Then comes Elusive Melody, and Zen Yada is closing nicely in the center of the track. Carmel Coffee has the lead, but you better take a look at Zen Yada to run by and do it nicely. Carmel Coffee left in second, Zen Yada. That was Bob Pandolfo on Sunday, July 14th, 2024. Welcome to Power Pace with Pandy, another edition of Morning Maidens. Yesterday, I had one horse that I talked about in a loaded two-year-old maiden race, Sam's Rocket, a Belmont Furster, and that horse broke slow. They paid $925,000 for the horse, but he was five or six lanes slow, and the track has been favoring um, horses close to the pace, so Sam's Rocket never got close. We'll see what happens. Naturally, Belmont will, you know, train him behind the gate and get him to, to break better. Um, I think they'll probably stretch him out to Sam's Rocket, but uh, we'll see if he can run. Uh, hopefully he came out of the race all right. He's a nice looking horse, but uh, you know, you never know. They, 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 he had that fast furlong at the sale. He looked good in the workout. They paid $925,000 for him and he's well bred, but he really didn't do any running, much running yesterday. You know, if you look at the Saratoga the way the track plays historically, going all the way back, you know, to, to the days of Angel Cordero when he was the dominant rider up there, the track was speed favoring back then. But then Charles Hayward became the um, CEO of Naira, and he hired new track and, uh, superintendents for uh, to handle all three surfaces. You know, at the time you had you know Aqueduct, you had Aqueduct Inner Track, Aqueduct Main Track, and then of course the Bel uh, Belmont and Saratoga. And he says, you know, I don't want speed favoring tracks. So they, they made the tracks deeper, which has been the trend really for many years. And Saratoga has been a pretty deep and tiring track. You might remember when uh, Triple Crown winner American Farrow went there for the Travers. Trainer Bob Baffert was concerned. He said, oh, this track is tiring. And he doesn't, he doesn't like that kind of track because his horses usually race on or near the lead. And sure enough, American Farrell um, set the pace and did, did tire. I think he finished third. So, but now this year, you had that four day meet last month, the Belmont Stakes special meet at Saratoga. And all four of those days were speed favoring. So far, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday of the summer meet, I didn't call it a, a speed bias, but all the all the races on dirt seem to be favoring horses that are on or near the, the, the lead or not too far back horses that have won from off the pace benefited from a, a blazing pace so they were set up nicely but I mean it looks like you have to be close up so once Sam's rocket broke slow he really didn't have much of a chance so today we're going to talk about a couple of races we're going to go to the first race of Saratoga today it's a two-year-old race for Phillies some pretty nice, um, nicely bred fillies in this race. Now, Belmont has two. He has Bossy Pants, who finished third. But I'm, I'm going for his other horse, even though he doesn't have Junior Alvarado on this horse. Practical Love. Now, this is another one of these workouts right here. OBS April 2024. I showed yesterday how you can go to the OBS uh, website. You can look for these horses. You can actually watch the actual workout. They call it a two-year-old in training and a workout where, where that's what, you know, the, the people who buy the horses are basing it on that and the way the horse looks, the pedigree naturally. But this horse went one furlong in 9.4 seconds. In other words, nine seconds and four fifths. Uh, four tenths, is it? 9.4. Uh, that's very fast, you know, furlong. Doesn't necessarily mean the horse is going to be a good horse because it's only a furlong, but... She looked good, though, this filly, and, and she galloped, again, you know, similar to the horse I mentioned yesterday, she galloped out really well after the 9.4 furlong blowout. And she, she looked to me like a really quick horse, and, she, and I like the pedigree because it's a pure speed pedigree, which is always good in these, you know, five and a half furlong races. And the sire and the grandsire, Into Mischief and Spitestown, are both very good first-time starters. You can see over here, 16% and 16%. Anything like, you know, 15% or higher is good for first-time starters. So, um, Practical Joke is a good speed sire first time out, and Spitestown is a good, you know, speed sire, and into Misty also. Uh, the, the Grand Sire, of course, is, a, you know, a good speed sire. 
So this is a good speed pedigree, and I have a feeling, you know, the horse could be alive at a price. Practical Love, the 7 in the first race. I picked that 781. And then we're going to go right down to race number 6, which is a mile and a 16th race on the turf. And this is also fillies, but these are three-year-old fillies. And I think this entry, which is going to be the favorite here, looks pretty solid. So this horse, Pishyapta, I think is her name. She's by Wooten Bassett, which is who is a good sire from Great Britain. This is a very good turf pedigree. And she finished well in her debut uh, at, at, at Keeneland back in April. And the filly that won that race, Suggesta, is now a grade two stakes winner on the turf. So you know that was a good feel. She was wide. She finished well. She's going to benefit from that. And then the other part of the entry, Deep Satin, is another horse that has a very good turf pedigree. Um, and this is a very good trainer, by the way, Sherry DeVoe. DeVoe. And uh, this horse has raced well on both of her starts. So if either one of these horses, you know, is scratched, I still think the other horse uh, is the horse to beat. I would particularly, I think out of the two, the, the one horse, this Pisciata, I believe is the stronger part of, of the entry. Um, but that, you know, no, no real value here, but I just think that, that horse is gonna, these horses are going to be tough to beat, especially if they both run. I think it looks like a pretty legitimate favorite as an entry. So anyway, that's it for today. Uh, remember that when Delmar opens, we'll have some good two-year-old races there too. Uh, I'd, like, I'd appreciate it if you subscribe to my channel. It's free. And thanks for tuning in and enjoy the races.